Fellas, it's no surprise that there's a lot of fighters in the UFC that are hated. Some of them have good reasons for it, and today I've picked out a bunch of the most hated fighters in the UFC, and the reasons why these guys are hated. What is it about these guys that make fans absolutely despise them? Is it their fight style? Is it their personality? Is it other things? I'm going to be going over a handful of fighters, so let me know if I've missed out any, you know, hated fighters. But I'm going in there with the first one, which is Ian Gary. Yeah, he's definitely one of the most disliked fighters in the UFC. I mean, we just saw at the UFC 298 press conference how much this guy was getting booed. Now, the reason I've... Well, the, the two main reasons I've gone for Ian Garrett is the first reason is the whole Neil Magny situation. This is the situation that I feel like kind of turned a lot of fans away from Ian Gary. Um, well, Neil, Neil Magny himself, he seems like a nice, normal guy. There's not too much to talk about him. Doesn't really come across as a horrible person or someone that you can kind of create beef with out of nothing. And essentially what he did is he said that he's going to discipline Ian Gary like you discipline a kid. Ian Gary essentially twisted the entire narrative of it and made Neil Magny come across as like this bad guy. And for the entirety of the UFC 290, 292 press conference, it was just Ian Gary chatting shit, you know, trying to rile the fans up, trying to turn the fans against Neil Magny, who's one of the most, well, he just doesn't say anything, Neil Magny. He's kind of just there. And Ian Gary's trying to make something out of nothing. And he, Neil Magny stated that this affected his career negatively, which is just a dick move from Ian Gary to do that to a guy like Neil Magny. Fair play if you're doing it to a guy like Colby Covington or someone who deserves what they've got coming to them because of what they say. But a guy like Neil Magny ruined his career for nothing. Well, it ruined his career, but, you know, turned the fans against him for nothing for that fight. And fair enough, he did beat the shit out of him when they did fight. But throwing the middle finger up, not really showing any respect to Neil Magny in the fight or outside the fight, overall just made Ian Gary come across as really unlikable the entire build up for the fight and that's the first reason I think this is definitely what made people turn away from Ian Gary the next reason irritating on the mic the claims that this guy comes out with is absurd. The, the things that this guy says, the, he said something the other day like he's too big to headline a pay-per-view or headline a card in Ireland. And I'm like, where is this guy getting this from? You look at the numbers. He's barely hitting 30k on an interview. There's fighters, other fighters at UFC 298 that are hitting way higher numbers than Ian Gary. I don't know about that. I don't know what who he thinks he is, but he's not as big as a star as he thinks he is. I mean, even at UFC 292, saying things like he's we're only watching that card for him. I don't know why he thinks he's such a big uh, such a big star. Um, he's not tries creating things from nothing. Even the whole Jeff Neal situation, he's just a hypocrite overall as well. Complaining about the fact that Jeff Neal pulled out of a fight and then he ends up pulling out against Vicente Luque. Um, overall, Ian Gary, he's a really disliked fighter and I feel like the Neil Magny situation and the fact that he's just so unbearable to listen to with his high-pitched voice on a mic is the two main reasons why he's super disliked and hated in the UFC. Next fighter, his Irish friend, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, he's the most popular fighter in the UFC, and with that, he's definitely one of the most hated fighters in the UFC as well. The first reason I've gone for is the Habib fight. I feel like the Habib fight is definitely a big reason why McGregor's hated. I mean, the entire build-up to this fight, he was trashing Habib, his culture, what he believes in. Everything to do with Habib was just being trashed. He was walking around, acting drunk, you know, drinking whiskey. Essentially, just not being a good, not not but not giving a good look to himself. Even if you're a casual watching McGregor, you're not going to look at him and think that he's not arrogant. And then he has the whole bus situation where he's throwing things into buses and injuring other fighters. But McGregor wouldn't care as long as Khabib's in the bus. He just wants to hit the bus, which was just super selfish. And this again turned a lot of fans against him. And then they, when it's actually time to fight, when you know he wants to talk the talk, can he walk the walk? He doesn't. He gets submitted by Khabib, and Khabib fans have done a great job at reminding reminding McGregor fans about this fight and reminding that McGregor would never beat Habib and obviously he didn't beat Habib and that's the first reason why I feel like people definitely definitely dislike Conor McGregor this fight alone the Dagestani fans and even just the casuals who you know wanted a you know an unbiased opinion on the fight and picked Habib and then the next reason is the false promises and I feel like this has increased massively in the last 12 months I mean, originally, it was us waiting for McGregor to get in the USADA pool. Waiting for him to get in the USADA pool so we, that we could finally watch Conor McGregor fight within a certain time period, and he does it. And then it was supposed to be him versus Chandler at the end of the, the Ultimate Fighter season. That didn't happen. Then we were waiting for McGregor to fight in, like, December, which didn't happen. And he's just going to these random places, giving us these random dates that he's going to be fighting, tweeting that he's going to be fighting on different events. And just recently, he said that he's going to be fighting at 185 in, like, July on some sort of pay-per-view. I don't know what pay-per-view 
was, but he says he's going to be fighting in July at 185. And then he backtracked and said that he's going to be fighting in UFC 300 instead. I don't think he knows where, where he's fighting, but if you're a McGregor fan, it's going to be irritating seeing this. It's just going to be, it, it showed that he's untrustworthy. He doesn't want to fight anymore. He doesn't want to walk the walk, and it's just super irritating to watch as if you're a McGregor fan. So those are the reasons why McGregor's disliked. He's kind of just turned his career. Like, at least early on in his career, he was cocky, but he backed it up, whereas nowadays, he's just talking a lot, but he's not backing anything up. So I've included Conor McGregor, and those are the reasons why he's hated. Next fighter... Israel Adesanya, definitely one of the most disliked fighters in the UFC. It's really hard to be a fan of this guy. The first reason, he's just super cringy. Yeah, the one line is that Israel Adesanya comes out with at press conferences. I mean, it's almost like every single press conference that Israel Adesanya has, he'll come out with some random one-liner that just makes it unbearable to watch. And it's not even just the press conferences. It doesn't even, doesn't even matter the opponent. It can be against a uh, Pereira, a guy that doesn't speak like Pereira or Whitaker, or it can be a guy that talks as much as Sean Strickland. Israel Adesanya will find a way to make some sort of cringy remark or some cringy statement about anything. And even his emotes in the octagon, the way he just come, you know, the, just the emotes in the octagon, the dancers in the octagon. I will admit, the Anderson Silver one, there was a few ones in the Anderson Silver one that were kind of cold. But outside of that, everything's just kind of cringy about Israel Adesanya. And that's why people call him the cringe lord. And then the next reason why people hate Adesanya, he's just a bit weird. Listen, I'm not going to get into the dog situation now. I'm pretty sure you all know if you were paying attention to fight week of him versus Strickland about the dog situation. So I'm not going to get into it now, but I'm just going to say it's really weird. Um, and then not even just that, the, the way he presents himself, the way he dresses, putting dog collars on himself. And uh, again, the, some of the stuff that this guy's coming out with and not even just, you know, him being attracted to dogs, but the way he like just the way he acts, like, for example, Robert Whittaker. For an example, Robert Whittaker posted a meme of Adesanya on Instagram, and then Adesanya at a press conference trying to confront him. It's just not noble behavior from Adesanya. Um, and those are the two main reasons, in my opinion, why people don't like him. Super cringy, slightly weird as well. Just doesn't come across as someone that you like to drink with in a bar. You know, the kind of, the kind of guy you don't really want to be friends with if you know Adesanya. So I've included Adesanya, hated, and I think those are the two main reasons why. It's also not that interesting, but I'm going, I'm going out of topic here. Next fighter... Bilal Muhammad, yeah, this guy, I need to get him out of the way. And the main reason, I think we all know, he's just super boring. The amount of decisions this guy gets, it's like he's a machine made for decisions with only two finishes in his in like a, a massive set of fights. He's the opposite of, of a human highlight reel. And it's not even like he's getting a decision and he's putting his life in there. It's not like he's going out there and having absolute wars. A Bilal Muhammad fight is either him laying on fighters for five rounds or three rounds against guys like Wonderboy and Vicente Luque, or it's him just having the most basic point fighting level of striking against Gilbert Burns. Who thought it would be a good idea to make Bilal Muhammad versus Gilbert Burns a five rounder? I, I was tired after the third round. It was a boring, boring fight, and what surprise, Bilal Muhammad was involved in it. Um, and he's only had like two highlight reels in his entire career, which was obviously him finishing Sean Brady and him getting knocked out by Vicente Luque. Apart from that, Bilal Muhammad is just really boring. And the second reason I've gone for is just his way of handling jokes. He just seems like he doesn't really have any friends, not in like a mean way, but he, he kind of just comes across like he can't really take a joke. Like the fans that are, fans that are you know, you know, pointing him, you know, giving him jokes. He doesn't really, he doesn't really answer them well. Doesn't really come across well. And then we've also got guys like Marab who are getting called boring, getting criticised, and he just gets on with it. And it, for, because he just gets on with it, there's a lot of people that have actually turned into a Marab fan. Whereas Bala Mohammed, I don't know, he just feels the need to to talk about every joke that's given to him, talk about every point that he receives. And for that reason, I've I've had to include him, and he just can't really take a joke. If Bala Mohammed went along with the jokes, you know, went along with the fact that he's boring and this and that, fair enough. He'd probably be a more likable guy, but the fact that he's just so, I don't know, he just seems always whiny and angry on Twitter and things. I've had to include Bilal Muhammad. Not the most likable guy. I just don't see how you can look at Bilal Muhammad and think, yes, I want to be a fan of this guy. He doesn't really scream a guy that comes across as, you know, a guy that you want to be a fan of, but I've included Bilal Muhammad and those are the reasons why. Next fighter, Paddy Pimlet. Now, I don't think Paddy Pimlet is one of the most haters in the UFC. But there was definitely a time when Paddy Pimlet was strongly disliked by a lot of people. The first main reason, 
is the Jared Gordon robbery. This was what kind of turned a lot of fans, and I didn't think he had a massive fan base, but this was definitely what had turned a lot of MMA fans against Paddy Pimlet. So essentially, I think it was UFC 282. He fought Jared Gordon, and this was and he was talking as if he was going to finish Jared Gordon in the first round. He was getting caught a lot by Jared Gordon. Some say exposed, and he didn't win the fight. He shouldn't have won the fight. It was a clear win to Jared Gordon, and what does the UFC do? Of course, they give Paddy Pimlet the win. Paddy Pimlet somehow gets the win in one of the biggest robberies that we've seen in this sport and fair enough it's not it's not Paddy Pimler's fault for losing he didn't he's not the judges he did what he could it's not his fault for losing but it wasn't that it was the press conference after the fight he's saying it's not even close saying that there's not a world where Jared Gordon wins and this is definitely where a lot of fans turned away because if there's one thing that MMA fans like it's being real and Paddy Pimlet was not being real there, saying that there's no way that Jared Gordon won the fight. Absolute BS. Um, so that's the first reason I've gone for why people dislike Paddy Pimlet. And the next reason, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's just extremely annoying. The press conferences where no one can understand what he's saying. The fact that he's just in your face all the time, that type of personality. I will admit, the Ferguson build-up, he was kind of kind of calm. I know we had a little exchange with Ferguson at the press conference, but that was warranted because Ferguson went at him first. But previous to the Ferguson fight, the, again, the emotes in the octagon, the way he's talking about how he's going to demolish every single fighter, and then he's always facing adversity early on, or he's just not being able to finish them. Um, and him and Molly McCann might be the most unbearable duo in MMA. It's so unbearable watching these guys with each other. And overall, Paddy Pimlet is just extremely, extremely annoying to watch. I don't hate him or anything. I think he can be, you know, quite fun at some times. But overall, he's annoying. And the Jared Gordon situation definitely turned a lot of people against him. Next fighter, Corby Covington. Yeah, Corby Covington, especially after UFC 296, one of the most hated fighters in the UFC. The first reason is he takes it too far. I'm not going to talk about this too much because I'm not like one of these super sensitive reporters, but he's to, and again, it's not the ultimate feeling championship, but you know, when he brings up things like Leon Edwards' dad or the state of Kamar Usman's dad or that Jorge Masvidal is the father, it's just things that don't need to be said at a UFC press conference. Fair enough if you want to promote yourself and it's worked. I mean, he did become a big star by promoting himself. Um, but the things that this comes out with, and especially against Leon Edwards as well, fair enough if you've got this massive, massive background of hating Masvidal, well, becoming friends and then hating each other, but Leon Edwards, a guy that's essentially an unhateable guy. I don't see how you can dis strongly dislike Leon Edwards, and then he's pulling out one-liners like he did against uh, Leon Edwards. It just doesn't really make sense. If you're going to do it, at least do it against a guy like Masvidal, which he did, but I don't understand why he's doing it to guys like Usman and Edwards. He just takes it too far sometimes. Even going at guys like Wonderboy, who's one of the most wholesome fighters in the UFC and finding a way to dislike Wonderboy, takes it too far. And the next reason, he's just super selfish. Dropping Masvidal when they were young, um, you know, dropping other people close to him just because he wants to become a promotable guy himself. The UFC 296 press conference where he loses to Leon Edwards in an embarrassing fashion because he was building himself up as if he's the people's champion that's going to put an entertaining fight for the fans and then goes out there and has one of the most disappointing performances in recent history and then starts swearing at the fans as if it's the fans' fault that, you know, they all had your back and you couldn't perform. Overall, just comes across as an untrustworthy person. And even Donald Trump, Colby Covington, you know, well, Colby Covington is Donald Trump's biggest fan. And even Donald Trump didn't even congratulate Colby Covington on the, well, not congratulate over a loss, but you know what I mean, you know, give him, you know, fair play to him. Even Donald Trump just walked out of the arena while Colby, Colby Covington was doing his speech. And it just shows how, how full of shit Colby Covington is. So that's my list of the most disliked fighters in the UFC and why they are disliked. Let me know if I missed any, you know, fighters that should have been included in this list and why they would have been hated. But Thank you for watching.